Today's video lecture is going to cover RNA. RNA is also a nucleic acid, just like DNA, but it's got some differences to it. So we're going to talk about the differences between RNA and DNA. Then we're going to talk about the three types of RNA that you need to be familiar with. We're going to talk about transcription, which is how one of the pieces of RNA is going to be made, and it's the first step in protein synthesis. And finally, we're going to talk about how we edit those that RNA those RNA pieces so that we get what exactly what we need to make the proteins. So the first thing are the differences between RNA and DNA. First set of differences deals with the bases. There are three bases which are the same between RNA and DNA. Adenine, guanine, and cytosine you'll notice are all the same between both RNA and DNA but a strand of RNA contains the base uracil instead of the base thymine. So when we're making RNA, we're not going to have any T's, and we're going to have U's that attach to the A's instead. Okay. The sugar that makes up RNA is slightly different also. The sugar that makes up RNA is called ribose, whereas the sugar in DNA was deoxyribose. Okay. RNA can also be single-stranded, whereas DNA always contains two strands. And finally, the location of where they can go. In eukaryotes specifically, DNA cannot leave the nucleus. Okay? If it is something that is outside of the nucleus, it must be RNA, because RNA can actually leave the nucleus once it's made and go into the cytoplasm. Okay? So major differences between RNA and DNA. So we have three types of RNA that you need to be familiar with. The first one is called messenger RNA. We're going to take and refer to that as mRNA for messenger. And what messenger RNA is, is it's an exact, it's a copy of the DNA. Okay? It's basically going to take your DNA, it's going to create a message from the DNA that can then be taken out into the cytoplasm to be made into proteins. So messenger RNA is going to come from a strand of DNA. It's going to be a long strand, and it's going to be a copy of what the DNA is so that it can be sent out into the uh, cytoplasm to send that message. The second one is ribosomal RNA. We'll refer to that as rRNA, and it's actually what makes up the ribosomes. Back in our section talking about the parts of a cell, you know, ribosomes are referred to as those little tiny dots within, a, uh, within the cell that you'll see them as. They just, they're just little tiny dots because they're so small. And they make proteins. What they are is actually two clusters of RNA together. Two clusters, two kind of small strands. So they're not going to be a long, big strand like messenger RNA is. It's going to be a cluster of smaller strands set together. And what's going to happen is this messenger RNA is actually going to go through this ribosome, through the ribosomal RNA, so that the ribosomal RNA can read it. Okay, the ribosomal RNA is going to read the message. Our final one is transfer RNA, and we're going to refer to that as tRNA. Now the tRNA kind of looks like a T-shape or an upside-down clover, if you want to refer to it as that. And it has a three-base code at the bottom here. What happens is as the ribosomal RNA is reading the message from the messenger RNA, it's going to pull tRNAs, or transfer RNAs, down into it. And there's going to be a three-base code from the mRNA in here. And it, the ribosomal RNA is going to match that with the three-base code that's opposite of it from the tRNA. So what would attach to each other is the G's and the C's would attach, and the A's and the U's would attach to each other. Okay, so this UAC would be for the first one here, AUG. Okay, so they would pair together and this would bring it in. And you'll notice at the very top here there's an amino acid. The transfer RNA or tRNA brings in an amino acid to start making an amino acid chain. And then as the, as the ribosome starts reading the message further and further down, each set of three we get a different mRNA coded, 
or a different amino acid coded for, and the chain of amino acids gets longer and longer. So mRNA, rRNA, and tRNA. Okay. Transcription is the first piece that we're going to talk about, and this is how the mRNA strand is made from the DNA. So what you'll notice is that, remember when we were talking DNA replication, we had DNA polymerase that took and added the DNA molecules in. Well now we have an RNA polymerase molecule here that's going to read the DNA sequence and it's going to put in amino, uh, put in the nucleic acids, each of the RNA pieces. So then we're going to get a long strand of mRNA that's eventually going to leave the cell, uh, leave the nucleus and go out to become a protein. Now, the question is always, well, how does the RNA polymerase know where to attach on the DNA and where to start? Because it's not going to read the entire length of DNA. So how does it know where to start? Well, it knows where to start because on the DNA, there's going to be a set of letters, coded letters, that are specific to an, to an RNA polymerase molecule. It's going to read those as the start of what to do. Kind of like all fairy tales start with once upon a time. You know that's the start of the, um, of the story. So this set of letters is going to be for RNA polymerase to start its transcription. Now, way to remember that. Um, first of all, that, that code is called the promoter. So that set of pieces that tells it to start, like once upon a time, is what's called a promoter, okay, and then it's going to read the rest of the chain, it's going to make it the mRNA molecule, and that process is called transcription. Now, you can remember that because tr transcription, if you transcribe something, you're going to write out a message, or you're going to write something out. Here, we're writing out our messenger RNA, so we're writing out a message. We're writing something down, we're transcribing, it's the process of transcription. Now, in eukaryotic cells, we have certain things placed in our system to help keep us from having a lot of changes to our DNA, okay? Bad changes to the DNA in particular. And because of that, we have what are called introns and exons within our code of DNA. So when it makes the mRNA strand, that's not the full thing. It's like taking a story and inserting all kinds of different pieces that shouldn't be there. So that in case something were to happen, we think it's going to happen within those pieces that actually shouldn't be there. So it's like reading this sentence originally. The dog, cat, rat, sat, saw doesn't completely make sense. But if we pull out the pieces that we need, we can figure out what it's supposed to mean. The cat set. So we pull out the pieces and we get a sentence that actually is coherent. The cat set. Now, the pieces that we pull out are called exons. Those are the ones that are expressed into proteins. So these are going to go now out and be read by the ribosomes and turned into proteins. Those are called exons. Exons are expressed. Okay. The second one, the, or the other pieces that we don't use, are called introns. And what's going to happen is those mRNA pieces are just going to go get broken down into their individual pieces again and then be used further by RNA polymerase to make another strand of mRNA later on. So the introns are the ones that are removed, they're inside the story and they don't need to be there. Okay, so the exons are the ones that we're going to use, the introns are the ones we're going to get rid of. Transcription is the first step in protein synthesis and if you wait for the next video you'll see what protein, uh, the final steps in protein synthesis and actually making um, our body look like it's supposed to.